How to make a simple and powerful antenna for analog and digital TV. This is Radio Geek Garage, and today I'll explain how to solve this simple household task. For new viewers on my channel, I'll just mention that I know a thing or two about antennas, so it's worth listening to me. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. First, we need to determine the frequency range we want to receive the signal from. Regardless of whether it's digital or analog TV, we must know the frequency range to build the antenna for the central frequency of this range. Example, suppose we need to receive digital TV on multiplex channels from two stations. One station operates at 400 megahertz, the other at 500 megahertz. We find the arithmetic mean 400 plus 500 divided by two equals 450 megahertz. This is the frequency we will build the antenna for. We will make a loop antenna, simple and quite powerful. The length of the loop must correspond to the wavelength, so we need to calculate the wavelength for the central frequency. To do this, we divide the speed of light by the frequency. Lambda equals C divided by F equals open parenthesis 300 megameters per second. Close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis 450 megahertz. Close parenthesis equals 0 0.666 meters, approximately 67 centimeters. We will make the loop from a conductor of this length. What should we use for the antenna element? Any relatively thick wire will do. A coaxial cable is ideal. If you have a coaxial cable, and you probably do since you've decided to connect an antenna, use it as the antenna element. The cable's impedance and its internal velocity factor do not matter. Cut a piece of coaxial cable to the required length, strip about a centimeter of the shielding and the central conductor, and solder the shield and the conductor together at each end. Bend this segment into a loop. Your loop antenna is ready. One end of the loop is soldered to the central conductor and the other to the shield. The feeder, that is, the cable that goes to the TV input or tuner input. Done, you can use it now. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of this antenna. Despite its simplicity, it is unlikely to work perfectly. The loop impedance is about 133 ohms, while the coaxial cable and TV input have 75 ohms. This is an almost twofold mismatch. It's good if the feeder itself works as a transformer on long lines, but you shouldn't count on it. Therefore, the antenna needs to be matched. There are several ways to do this. You can use a matching device based on long lines, such as a U-bend, a ferrite impedance transformer, or you can modify the antenna itself, making it even more powerful. I consider the latter option preferable. All we need is to make another identical loop. This way we get a bi-loop antenna, which is not only better matched to the TV input, but also provides higher gain due to the increased element length. The input impedance of the bi-loop is about 66.5 ohms. This allows it to be connected to both 75 ohm and 50 ohm cables. But there is an even better option, a dual resonance antenna system. To create such an antenna, we won't make both loops the same size and tuned to the same frequency. Instead, we will make them of different sizes. Suppose we are solving the same problem of creating an antenna for digital TV stations, broadcasting at 400 and 500 megahertz. Calculate the wavelength for the first station, L equals C, divided by F equals open parenthesis 300 megameters per second, close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis. 400 megahertz close parenthesis equals 0 0.75 meters equals 75 centimeters. Calculate the wavelength for the second station, L equals C, divided by FF equals open parenthesis. 300 megameters per second, close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis, 500 megahertz, close parenthesis equals 0 0.6 meters equals 60 centimeters. Cut pieces of wire or cable of the corresponding lengths. If using a coaxial cable, solder the shielding and central conductor at each end, then bend the elements into two loops, connect them and solder the feeder. We now have an antenna similar to the bi loop but this version will have not just one sharp resonance, but a U-shaped frequency response, similar to a coupled resonator system. Thanks to this, the antenna will better receive signals from stations operating at different frequencies, 
as well as a wider range of analog TV. Moreover, it will improve the antenna's input impedance characteristics. The input impedance will be closer to 75 ohms, which will widen the range of adequate impedances. This antenna does not require additional transformers or matching devices. It receives signals with the same gain as a standard bi-loop but across a broader range. A reflector is optional. The antenna works perfectly without it. However, if you want to make it directional, place the reflector behind the antenna at a distance of no more than a quarter of the upper frequency wavelength. Let's summarize the process. First, determine the frequency range or specific frequency for the antenna. If the antenna is for a single frequency, simply make a bi-loop with identical loops of length corresponding to the wavelength lambda equals C divided by F. If you need to widen the reception range for analog TV or create an antenna for multiple digital TV frequencies, make loops of different sizes according to their wavelengths. The result is a bi-loop with a U-shaped frequency response. Such an antenna does not require matching devices and can be connected directly to the cable and TV input. Friends, please share this video on social media and different platforms to help the channel grow. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, check out other videos on antennas and radio engineering on our channel. They might be useful to you. Thanks, friends. Good luck.